Hey, we just got done hooking up this Solark. We've got 40 of these batteries. So that's uh, 1,380 amp hours at 48 volts. I've got the laptop connected right now. Why is my light on? Oh man. And it has identified that um, these are the highest cells in the group, in the whole battery bank, which is accept acceptable. But these ones are not quite full yet. This battery is only at 3.38 volts per cell. It's at 97% state of charge. And um, I don't, uh, maybe I had hooked that battery up to something and stole a little power out of it at some point in the last six months, because I've had these batteries sitting here for six months waiting to get hooked up, but I was doing all kinds of stuff. So maybe I did. So I just got this tiny little, um, this tiny little charger and it's, it's charging battery number 25. This is the low one. So we're putting a little bit of power from that trickle charger in. Only one amp. See all the other ones are at 0.1. This one's at 1.1. So it's, uh, is charging. We'll see how long it takes to catch up. But so first impressions of this is it's noisy and it puts out a high pitched ringing sound that just drives me nuts. And um, I normally am the one not to complain about those kinds of sounds that my kids would complain about. I can't even hear it and my kids are complaining, right? But this case, I can hear that thing. Um, also the fans, it's got three of them and they kind of uh, go and they uh, harmonize and the vibrations go voo, 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 as they are kind of matching tone. And it's uh, ultimately kind of, it's not just, a, not just a steady fan noise, it's more of a changing fan noise that brings your attention to it. You would not want this thing anywhere near where you're trying to relax. Um, so we have uh, a lot of panels hooked onto this, maybe I don't even remember, maybe around 12,000 watts or something. And then we've got a third array connected to this one. There's around 3,500 watts, I think, on this one. And all the batteries are in these boxes. Got our bus bars here. It's kind of funny, but uh, yeah, it was... Um, just wanted to make sure that we could somehow get 10 strings completely equal so every wire length is the same every crimp connection inside is identical so every string experiences an identical amount of resistance between itself and the inverter i even went as far as to make these the same distance i don't know if that matters this is a really thick so it's probably not going to matter there but um over here I've got the valence battery controller box. So this button allows power to be supplied to the valence BMS. This button allows the batteries to be on. And if there's still no power, this button uh, connects a pre-charge resistor across the terminals of the relay across here. That way it can slowly charge up the caps, the capacitors in there and in there. And so that when the relay clicks on, there's no giant spark and the terminals won't get welded shut. Um, I also got, uh, I was out of blue LEDs, so I don't have the 75% charge indicator here. Uh, but right now it would be on if I had it. Of course, the warning light and buzzer will come on before it has to disconnect anything. It'll ring for, you know, I don't know how long, but for a while anyway, before it has to shut anything down. And the top light is balancing complete and charge. So that's not gonna come on until we can get this battery up above 3.4 volts per cell. And we are climbing. We're, we're making some progress towards that now. So it should come on soon, probably within the next five hours. One thing I've noticed about the Valance BMS that I don't like is that it will not balance 
battery to battery when there's one low battery, except for that low battery. In other words, since this one is so low and all the other ones are way higher, um, all of the resistors are on in every single battery, 39 batteries, they all have the resistors on, except for this one. Even though there might be some batteries that are significantly behind others, their, their resistors are on anyway, because they're much higher than this one. So, you know, it's only working on one battery at a time right now. Um, and that will change when this one gets higher. We'll have more, we'll have more nose here. So you can see the, uh, all right, so look at this one. Okay, cell one, two, three, and four. Cell four is balancing. Cell three, two, and one aren't. But the whole 12 volt group is balancing. And look at all these yeses. Like every single one is a yes except for battery number 25, which is the low battery. Now, when this one, when this battery 25 gets higher, there will be more nose mixed in here, but when it gets severely out of, out of balance like that, it'll only work on the lowest battery. So yeah, it's just kind of frustrating. I kind of, and I'm half tempted just to put a, a $50 string balancer on every string in here. So there's, there's six strings in that box. There's three strings underneath and then one string here on top. So, you know, I don't know. I don't think it's really necessary, but time will tell. I mean, I, this is the first time I turned this system on, so we'll see. And something that appears to be a complaint I'm gonna have about this uh, solo arc is that once the uh, generator comes on, it'll stay on until the batteries are 95% full. And it's not programmable. I, I don't. I don't get this. What in the world? Is that for real? Like seriously? Come on. I mean, they're lithiums, all right. So when they're dead, you want the generator to come on, of course. But you don't need it to to charge all the way. I mean, there's almost 80 kilowatt hours here. That generator would take at 5,000 watts. What is that? Freaking? Is that 40 hours? No. I don't. I don't want the generator on for 40 hours. I just wanted to come on for like, you know, maybe one or two hours, just just to give us a little, a little top up, you know, to get us through the night until the sun comes out tomorrow. I, I I'm really confused, but I'm going to figure out a way um, to make that generator shut off sooner. I thought about maybe only putting a little bit of gas in it, but it's connected to a 200 gallon propane tank, so that's not an option. This thing's a little irritating, you know. You get in here. And you can barely see these numbers, like, I mean, you can see them when you're right in front of it, but if you get a little bit away, you get at a funny angle, it's really hard to read it. So, yeah, it works, but it's just a little frustrating. And one thing to make note is, um, this thing won't start charging until the solar power reaches 175 volts. So if you, if, you know, if you have one of these, and you got a hundred and... 20 volts or whatever coming from the panels and you decide to switch to one of these like we did you're gonna have to go up on your roof and change your series parallel configuration of your panels kind of sucks because you know the delta inverter that i'm using at home has a 100 volt kick in so that would be sufficient you know that would have been sufficient we wouldn't have had to go up there and change things and then once it kicks in it'll allow it to go down to 150 and it'll still work I mean, when this one kicks in at 175, it can go down to 150 and it'll still use the solar to charge. So it appears that the, um, the generator breaker in here is kind of an auxiliary and you can use it to, to configure it to be an output to charge your electric car or something when, when the batteries are full. Um, but I mean, come on, that's cool and all, but, um, I kind of want, I, I, I don't, I don't want to have to choose between a generator and a dump load. Can't you just give us both? It's, it's not that hard, right? So we don't have the generator actually working. So we tied it to the grid instead. And that, that charges, we got to do something with the, the neutral bonding or something like that in order to get the generator to work on the generator breaker. So far, that's the largest, uh, 
system that I put together, 40 batteries. Um, previous to that was 38. And that's at, I have the 38 at my house. I've been using that for almost a year now. And I love it. Lithium kicks lead acids ass. I mean, look at what, look at what this replaced. This replaced all this. This stuff, holy cow, this thing is heavy. Way too heavy, man. 1500 amp hours, two volt. And if you're gonna use lead, this is the way you do it. Large, single, you know, single cell stuff. So you might ask, what are we doing with the old system? It's for sale, 3,500 bucks. Comes with the batteries and they're still good. He just wanted lithium, so yeah.